Erotube, we are back on for another program review today. And the submission was sent by Jeff, aka Alex, who tells me that he's 19, he's been training since he was 14, he's 5'8", 165, and he um, estimates his body fat to be around 15%. He tells me he was born with cerebral palsy that affects only his legs, so he doesn't do anything for the lower body, of course. First off, I need to say this is really impressive. Um, you know, I'm not one to virtue signal too much, but the fact that you still are working out and training your body even though you were dealt a crappy hand at birth is really impressive and uh, it's motivating. And if you're a person on this channel who isn't dealing with any of these afflictions and you're lucky to be fully functional in a sense, you should uh, draw inspiration from that and stop uh, you know, making excuses for yourself because there are people who cannot use their legs properly who are still working out. So, he tells me his max bench is 220 and he can uh, do rows with 245 on his row machine. So he trains different movements each month, depending on whether he has a plateau or if he has issues with his shoulder, which you should be addressing. If you have issues with your shoulder, rotating lifts can be a good way to walk around it, but the underlying issue should be uh, treated head on because at the end of the day, if it still aches and bothers you, this means that there are movements in the rotation that don't agree with you or that the volume and intensity are not right, meaning that you are not recovering enough or you're damaging the tendon over time. We want to avoid that. And he tells me that one of the variations he will do, for example, is he'll do a month of decline bench, which is very taxing on the shoulder, by the way, and then a month of weighted dips, which are also taxing on the shoulder. Then incline bench, which is less taxing. And for pulls, you'll do rows or weighted chins. Uh, depending on what your loaded row machine is, you are doing a vertical and an horizontal pull. These are not really lifts that can take part of the same variation because they work different movement patterns, just so you know. He doesn't do any direct shoulder work because he doesn't like it, which is fine. And he has decent shoulders, so he doesn't care, which is, again, perfectly fine. His arms are his weakest point. They started at 10 inches flexed, which was what I started at too. And now they're around 15, so good job. You added a lot of mass on your arms, that's good. And you can keep adding mass, I guarantee you that. So on a typical week, he will train three days. And on those three days, for example, if he benches, he will do five sets of eight and five sets of eight. I will go back and discuss the details once we're done reading the details. And then he will do five sets of eights of rows. Then at least one day out of that week, he will train arms and he'll do a five by five for extensions and curls. Then on one of the old off days, he will pick a random exercise that he wants to improve on just for fun and do that to keep things interesting. And that's it for his message. He doesn't give me a, a direct concrete program which is fine because his program is apparently, it's fairly easy to decipher, it's pretty straightforward. So, from what I gather here, what he does is, he does strength work only, meaning that when he has a training session, that will be strength work. This is a fine way to progress at first, in my opinion. Once you get to a certain level, you will find that your ability to control volume if you only do high intensity strength work is going to be damaged. This is why people start doing variations, this is why people start doing accessories. It's not necessarily because you need those movement patterns or you'll need, you need those modified versions of the compound movements or isolation movements to grow. There is some truth to that, but there's also the fact that by adding more uh, uh, entries to your workout, it gives you more freedom to manipulate volume, which then has an impact on your tonnage, and it becomes a, a, a thing of synergy, it becomes a, 
a work of art in a sense where now you have much more tools and cards in your hands to play with and your program is so much more flexible that you can avoid plateau very easily. So you will start and you will work three days a week. Three days a week is not bad at all. Some people will tell you it's the best possible frequency to train at. Um, <clears throat> I don't necessarily disagree with that on certain programs. If you do a body part split, of course, three days a week is not enough. This is also what most people don't get. Your weekly frequency is going to be directly correlated with the type of program you run. Uh, certain programs will work fine three days a week, certain will not. So, so for some programs, because of the frequency they dictate by the type of days that they put forth in terms of programmation, you're going to be stuck within a certain range of days. For example, you are going to be hard pressed to train seven days a week on a push pull leg. Why? Because it's a, it's a three day uh, split. So the, if you do it twice, it's six days, etc., etc. So he does three days a week. And he repeats the workout. So from what I get, Jeff, from what you tell me, because you don't do legs, of course, you can focus solely on the upper body. I, I think that this is also where the, your shoulder issue comes from. Horizontal presses tax the shoulder. I don't care what people have to say about that. There's a polythene bias in the, in the work when it comes to that topic. But a lot of people who have shoulder issues the shoulder issues come from the horizontal presses they do because they do it often and they do it often. Why? Because they want to progress on it. And the best way to pro progress on your bench, on your dips is to up the frequency, just like anything else. But I do think that because of the movement pattern, it's, it's a type of lift that is going to be very, uh, uh, technically very, potentially injurious in, term, in terms of overuse. And you also tell me that you don't like doing shoulder uh, work, which tells me that you don't like doing vertical presses, which are some of the best thing you can do for your shoulders. So what I would say you do, seeing, seeing uh, your program here, I would say if you do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, on, Wednesday, on Monday and Friday, you can still do your uh, heavy horizontal presses. That's fine. Bench or dips, whatever you want. But I would make your Wednesday a vertical press day. I know you don't like shoulder work. I'm not telling you to, um, I'm not telling you to make the overhead press or whatever shoulder press you want to do a strength work. I'm not even telling you to be passionate about it. I'm just saying that just by taking away one day of horizontal press and replacing it by just some sub maximal lower intensity high reps shoulder presses, you are going to do a lot of good to your shoulders. The reason why I say that is yes, by doing what I just told you to do, you're going to sacrifice gains on your horizontal presses. That is a given. That being said, what you lose in muscular gains, you're going to gain in shoulder integrity. Why? Because even low weight is going to develop the musculature of your shoulders. And if you do it with the proper form, it's going to keep your shoulders healthy. This is uh, a game that you're going to stay in for years and years and years, and you're only 19. If you already have a shoulder that's bothering you by 19, I can tell you from experience, it's only going to get worse and you're eventually going to get snapped up. And if you're like me and you're lucky, it's going to be nerve related and there's not going to be any structural damage done to the shoulder, which means you're going to be able to recover from it without needing surgery. If you're not lucky, you're going to snap a tendon, you're going to snap the rotator cuff, and this can be a death sentence. So between hurting yourself down the line and never being able to press with a barbell again or doing dips again, or taking a step back and working on something you might not like, I would do the second option. So what I would say you do on the Wednesday, you can still do your rows. That's great. Still do your rows. But instead of the, the dips or the bench, do overhead press, seated overhead press, do eight to 12 reps for four sets and uh, superset each set with face pulls. 
That way you're going to bulletproof your shoulders and you're going to be able to press to your heart's content on Mondays and Fridays. I also see here that from what I uh, check, the sets that follow the horizontal presses are going to be rows and that's good. Issue is you are doing rows with a plate loaded row or you're doing uh, weighted chins. These will develop the back, but depending the, the weighted chins are not going to develop the upper portion of the upper back as much, which, which is what is called the, scra the scrapular belt, which is what protects your shoulders. And as far as loaded row machines go, most of which the ones I know, especially if you pull like this, it's going to be a ton of lats, but it's not going to work the upper back as much either. So the idea that by pulling as much as you press or going to protect your shoulders, it is a, it's a simplistic notion. It's not as straightforward as that. It depends on the type of pulls. A, a face pull, right? is completely different from a pull where you're going to pull to your belly button. It's going to work different muscles, it's going to work different functions of the upper back. So I would say that if you want to keep doing the program that you're doing now, you need to start integrating certain things that are going to prevent overuse injuries. So if you have the option with your plate, uh, your loaded machine for the rows, if you can have a grip that was that is going to be allowing you to pull like this instead of like this, I would say do a variation and do some of this too, so that you can focus on the upper back, on the traps, and on the real delt. And that's going to also keep it fun for you because I feel like you're the type of person who likes that. So that's how I would uh, change the template of your training. You don't have to do that, but. Uh, it might sound a little bit mean to say that, but you, your legs are already not working through no fault of your own, right? Uh, if your shoulder gets hurt too, it might really put a damper on your life. Not just your training, but your life in general. I know personally that when I was snapped up and I had my knee problems, when the shoulder issues started piling up on top of the knee problems, it really put me in a dark place. So I want to avoid that for you. Okay, so you do all of that, uh, the weighted, uh, as far as the program in itself, I'm going to start discussing your rep ranges right now. Dun, dun, dun. So you do five sets of eight. I really don't like five sets of eight. Uh, the reason why is because it's even worse than five sets of five. Because if you can, if you can get eight reps on the first set, you understand that you are undershooting the potential you have to push intensity because you are able to repeat that feat five times for a total of five by eight. I failed math in school, so I cannot do that calculus in my head, but it's so much tonnage at such an intensity that you could replicate that amount without having to do what I would call sub-maximal sets. So I would say if you like your 5x5, five five, you seem to like 5 sets, do 5 sets of 6, 6 to 8 would be too small too. I would say do 5 sets of maybe 6 to 10. That way you're going to experience the higher curve of the volume and the lower curve of the volume where if you can get five sets of 10, your, your ability to up the weight and do five sets of six is pretty much guaranteed. And even that, just saying that to you, I, don't, I still don't like it because I feel like five sets of working, uh, working sets is, is too much. That's my bias, but I personally feel like you don't need as many. That being said, because of the way your program is written, it's pretty much all you do, right? And you seem to, get, to be getting uh, results from it. So because I don't know how your body responds to that, I would advise you to look at my videos about evolving rep ranges and try and see if you can turn that five sets of eight into something else. Because I don't, I'm stuck right now. I don't think 
I can find a way for you to walk around that and keep your five sets because I would be reducing the sets, which I don't think you want to do. A way around it though would be to do three sets of four to eight and then add two back off sets where you're going to be a fixed number of eight reps. That way you have these uh, two sets where you know you're going to be able to push within a, a, a fixed rep range, but you have your evolving sets before that are, there's three of them where you can manipulate volume and intensity more easily. So that might be something you want to look into. Same logic for the rows. I think that the issue with uh, uh, eight of, uh, of uh, five sets of eight is that it's going to provide volume at a steady pace, but it's too steady, meaning that you're stabilizing tonnage too much. And when you eventually put weight on the bar, now your tonnage is jumping too much. So you're, instead of doing this, you're doing this. So you're, you're staying at a, a volume that is not going to be super beneficial for growth because you're not pushing the body with the right intensity. And then when you do push the body, it's too sudden. So unless you tell me otherwise, I, I, it's from what I see here, that's the type of program where you're going to stay on with the same weight for super long to the point where it becomes uneventful at some point and too easy. And when you finally jump, it's going to feel like you jumped into the unknown and you're going to plateau or you're going to regress or you're not going to get the, the sets and reps that you would want. If it's not the case and you somehow progress on this, then disregard what I just said. But that's just what I get from uh, this in terms of programming. All right, so that's, that's what I would change in terms of the template that you gave me. Then you tell me that uh, at least one day out of that week, you will train arms, all right? So I'm, I'm guessing it's a, a day on top of the three days, or maybe it's added on the same day. I don't know. It doesn't really change much. You do five by fives on extensions and curls. Again, five by fives, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that being said for isolation work, especially if you only do it once a week, it's better. Than, than it would be for the rest of your program. Uh, you don't tell me exactly what to do for extensions. I hope you do some score crushers for the long head because you work your presses a lot. You really don't need more work for the, the lateral and medial head. You need to focus on the long head. Okay, so that's what you do for arms. And arms are one of your priorities, as you told me. And remember that frequency is going to be your ally when it comes to growing a body part. So if you, to, you went from 10 inches to 15 inches, so you're, you're progressing on this. If you ever want, or if you have a stall, but if you ever want to progress faster, you can just up the frequency. And uh, I, I think slapping some more extra isolation movements for the arms at the end of your rows and bench isn't gonna kill you, okay? And then on one of your off days, you pick a random exercise that you want to improve on just for fun. That's what I call uh, a side project. Now, my side projects are usually more technical than they are uh, based on hypertrophy, meaning that they are usually for fun. They don't tax my musculature much. They do tax my tendons, though, and they have very minimal effects on the size of my muscles or my overall tonnage. I do that because my program is so dense that I have to make sure they don't interfere with the rest of the program. I don't know how you program yours, but with the way your program is done, you could totally have a random exercise that actually is hypertrophy based. That would be perfectly fine. And you do that for fun. That's, that's, that's great. As long as you stick with them, of course, if you want to progress. And because you do that on your off days, off days, remember, we take off days to recover mentally and physically. Um, I bet, I hope you're not doing anything that involves the chest, the shoulders, especially leave your shoulders alone uh, or your upper back. So maybe something for the traps. I do notice that there's not a lot of trap work in here. And because of course, you're not doing pull from the pulls from the floor. You might, you know, if you want bigger traps, you might want to research that. Also keep in mind that the traps aren't just this. 
right? This, these are the upper traps. Your traps also go down your back, uh, your upper back, and they protect your shoulders as well. So if you can find a way to develop your mid and lower traps, this is also going to have an effect because it's going to, of course, you're going to get bulkier up there. And what I find is it pulls on your back and on your neck and you get a nice straight posture like this and it pulls your shoulders back. So you have that nice position where when you press, you can really tuck them back and there's a support for them to be tucked in. So that is pretty much all I have for you today, Jeff. Um, I'm going to pin your comment if you comment. So let me know if uh, you want me to talk more about this. But that's going to be pretty much that for the day. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great weekend.